I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, her education. She has a degree, or her master's degree in adult education, from, and she has been teaching at the University of Limerick. That's where she was teaching uh, when she and John lived there. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Um, now, she currently works as a consultant and life coach. She really does work on relational issues, how to get a group of people working well together in their long suits and their strength. And certainly, God has gifted her with a great ability. And she's going to share some of that with us today. And I want to, again, encourage you, when you come here or you do anything in your life, Come with expectation that God is going to give you what you need. And so let's have on our, our listening ears and please welcome Reverend Ellen Fowler. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Please be seated. Um, Tanya asked me to teach this morning about listening. Some of you who were at the Kingdom Relationships Advance will remember some of the stuff I'm going to say. But um, we heard in manifestations a lot about the fact that he's always with us. He's always there for us. And he's always listening. So I'd like to take a minute. I'd like for each of you to take a minute and just talk to him for a minute about something that you want. Something that's your, on your heart, just ask him for it. Lord, thank you that you really are always listening. That you heard, you hear what's in our hearts. You hear stuff that's in our hearts that we don't even know is going on. Thank you that you listen to us so completely and that you're always, like the song says, calling us deeper into love. So, here's a question for you. If you had to make the choice, would you rather be blind or deaf? How many people would rather be deaf? Well, you guys know sign language. <laughs> okay, how many people would rather be blind? You know, it, I heard somebody say once, blindness separates you from things. Deafness separates you from people. Imagine not being able to hear. You'd, you'd be able to tell from somebody's facial expressions or body language if they were upset or, or angry or happy, but you wouldn't really know what was going on in their heart and mind unless you could speak, unless you could hear what they had to say. And it's really the same if you speak two different languages, but with deafness, unless you're one of the 10% of the population that can speak sign language, you're really separated from people. So hearing is really a gift that we tend to take for granted because we've had it all our lives. And I think we, we, don't, we often don't use it for what God intended. I really believe that, God, that, that hearing is a, one of the most powerful ways of loving people in the world. I heard a story yesterday, it, it's, it's a it's about both seeing and listening, but I think it really pertains. There was a woman, it was, I was here, I heard a woman who was an actress tell a story about she went, she was going for an audition in LA, and she, she said, every time you go to an audition, there's security, there's a security desk in the building that you go. So I went in, and as I went in, I just, I looked at the secure, the man behind the security desk, and I thought, God wants something. He, want, he has something to say to this guy. 
So she goes up to her audition. She comes back down. She says to the guy, how are you? And he says, I'm good. And she says, is there anything you need? She's kind of waiting for God to give her some kind of word. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So, so finally, she just, he says, I don't want anything. I don't need anything. I'm good. She goes to leave. And as she's putting her hand on the door to leave, the guy says, well, maybe you could pray for my general well-being if, you really, if it would make you feel good to pray. So she goes back. She sits down with the guy behind the desk, and she's still got nothing in her mind. Like, God hasn't given her any word. So she just she starts to pray, and she says, God, and he says, open your eyes, And she looks at the guy, and he's staring at her. Just no expression on his face. So she's like, now I feel really weird. (laughs) And God says, tell him what you see. And she said, you know, I see you. And I see, and all of a sudden she got the sense that he was generous. And she started talking to him about how he affected how people came in and out of that building by his presence, and she said, I can't even remember what else I said because it was Holy Spirit, but I finished, and he said, thank you. Still no effect. She said, I I said, well, I guess I'll go now, and she was saying to the Lord, what a dud. (laughs) She's starting to walk out, and the guy goes, thank you. That hasn't happened to me in 13 years. And she was like, wait, what? Like, that's really specific, 13 years. What do you mean, nobody's prayed for you in 13 years? He said, I've had this job for 13 years. Five days a week, I sit here from 8 in the morning until 6 at night. It's the first time anybody's ever seen me. So it's such a gift that we have to see and hear because it was seeing. Oh, I forgot to tell you that the Lord, when she started praying, the Lord said, do not break eye contact with him. So she was looking at him the whole time. But I, I mean, I've had the same experience in a way with people just listening to them. I remember, you know, when I moved to Ireland, I was, nobody knew me. I was John Kelly's wife. So I was invited along to a lot of stuff because my husband was the CEO of the Irish Chamber Orchestra, and so met some pretty important people in Ireland. And one time we were at a dinner in Dublin, and I was seated beside a guy. I didn't know who he was. We, you know, I started to, I just asked him about himself, and we, you know, hit upon a subject he was interested in, and I was asking about, we had a great conversation. And afterwards, John said, well, How'd you get along with the provost of Trinity College Dublin? That's the top job. I I went, great. And he said, most people can't even talk to that guy. Like, they don't even know what to say. But it wasn't a matter of knowing what to say. It was just a matter of listening to him. And I think, I mean, he really, he made a point of coming up to me at different times later in the evening. I think just because he felt like, here's somebody that I can talk, that hears me, that's not, have, you know, that's not in their mind thinking about themselves or being self-conscious or what are they going to say, but just interested in me. Um, and you know, uh, if you look in the Bible, from Genesis onward, people are calling out to God, asking him to hear them. If you could put up the next slide. Here's a couple from Psalms. Oh God, listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. From the ends of the earth I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. The word listen is actually the word give attention. So so the psalmist is saying, "Give, give attention to my cry. And hear my prayer, and I'm going to talk a little more about here in a minute. So let's look at the next one. 
Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my plea. Same thing. Answer me because you are faithful and righteous. I've got another slide that has both of these uh, together, both of these verses together. If you could put that up, the next one. So here are the, both the verses. Oh God, listen to my cry, hear my prayer. From the ends of the earth I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord, listen to my plea, answer me because you are faithful and righteous. What do those two verses have in common? Hear and listen. God. That God, what? They're speaking to God. Yep, they're speaking to God. Are they expecting anything? What are they expecting? They're expecting some kind of response, aren't they? And that gets to the word hear. Remember I said listen is pay attention. The, the Hebrew word for hear is the word shamaya. It's translated listen over 600 times in the Old Testament. It's also translated obey. There's no separate word. In Hebrew, to hear is to obey or to respond. That, that's the expectation. You can't hear in Hebrew without responding. Isn't that interesting? Um, so if I could have the next slide. Um, God also really asks people to listen to him all through the Old Testament. Draw near to me. And I love the, I love the pictures that God paints. Like, draw near to me. And some of these are actually great tips. I'm going to talk about some practical tips for really listening well to people. And he gives you a lot of tips in the verses where he's asking you to listen in the Old Testament. Draw near to me. Hear this. From the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. From the time it came to be, I have been there. So God is pleading with people all through the Old Testament. Listen to me. Listen to me. Um, it, unfortunately, a lot of the time, Israel didn't do a very good job. Right? If I could have the next slide. Yet they did not listen to me or incline their ear. There's another great picture. You know, my father, at the end of his life, lost some of his hearing. And when, when you were talking to him, he'd actually, like, incline his ear. And sometimes he'd even do this, because he wanted to make sure he was hearing what you were saying. Israel didn't listen to him or incline their ear. They stiffened their neck instead. Does anybody know what stiff-necked means? Unmovable? Unyielding? Stubborn? Good one. Yeah, it's a figure of speech, and it actually comes from, if you could put up the next slide, it comes from plowing the Old Testament. Um, in the Old Testament, uh, a man would plow with a yoke of oxen. He only needed one hand to guide the plow as you can see. And in the other hand, he had a goad. And he'd use the goad to touch their legs, their hind legs, if he wanted them to speed up. Or to touch their neck, if he either wanted to keep them on the right track or make them turn. There wasn't any other way of him steering them. You can see, from there, there weren't like reins. He had one hand on the plow, and he used the go the goad to turn them or keep them in the right track. And if, a, a, if an ox didn't respond to the goad, it was called stiff-necked. Yeah. So, so the, 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 um, the ox wouldn't respond to that little, it probably felt a little like a prick. 
And I think sometimes when God is speaking to us, it may feel a little bit like a prick. I remember Tanya for a while was talking, was using the term ping a lot. You know, he pings you. It's almost like, like that. And what we want to be able to do is, is respond to that, to stay, to stay tender to it, to his voice, um, instead of stiffening our neck. Um, next one, I couldn't help putting this up when I was looking about stubbornness. <laughs> Just a random thing I found over the internet. For those of you who are listening, it's a billboard that says, this year thousands of men will die from stubbornness. And somebody spray painted, no we won't. <laughs> okay, next one. This is, this is one you'll recognize. Um, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen than the fat of rams. Listen is that same word I talked about before, to give attention. Guess what the word obey is? Shamea. Same word as to hear. So he is saying here, it, it, it's, again, the idea is, I can't obey unless I really hear. And if you think back to the two verses from Psalms about, Lord, hear my, hear my prayer, listen to my plea, that could have been translated, Lord, obey my prayer. Obey my prayer. Respond to my prayer. There was no difference. So, so, what, so what the psalmist is asking God to do is respond. What God is saying here is to, to give, it, give your attention to me and respond to me is better to me than sacrifices. It's better than, and if you look in the, if you look in the books of the law about what the sacrifices did, there's a lot of stuff about it's a pleasing odor. It's a pleasing odor to me. It pleases me. The Lord has more delight when we, resp when we give, when we incline our ear and pay attention to him and respond than in anything else we can give him. Isn't that something? It's listening to him is a big deal. You know what? Um, it's also true that all through the Bible, people ask other people to listen to them. From Genesis onward, people are saying to each other, to kings, to people who have stuff in authority, Jacob to Esau, people who who have something that somebody else wants or that who are important to other people or can do something for them. People are always saying, hear us, listen to us, uh, pay attention to what we're asking or saying to you. Jesus, Jesus said it. Oh, and by the way, God said it about Jesus a few times. <laughs> this is my beloved son, listen to him. That's a word for the ages. But, um, but Jesus also said it, if you could put up the next slide. This is in, in the context of the parable of the good sower. Um, and af if you remember, after he t taught the parable of the good sower, his disciples came to him and said, tell us what this means. And he said, first he said, listen with your heart and you will understand. This is the Passion Translation. The Amplified translates it, he who has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him consider and learn by hearing. So it's that same idea that we've seen in the Old Testament about pay attention, consider it, learn as you're hearing so you can respond. And then he said, you have been given a teachable heart to perceive the secret hidden mysteries of God's kingdom realm. But to those who don't have a listening heart, my words are merely stories. 
And all of us probably have experienced listening without really listening. We've done it, and we've had it happen to us. So next slide, how do we listen with our heart? How do we do it? How do we do it? I'm asking. I'm asking. It's not just a rhetorical question. How do we? We attentive is one thing. Yep. Reciprocate. We listen in order to be able to reciprocate. Yep. Yeah, look, look beyond just the words and listen to the heart. Compassion. Have compassion, that's a big one. Yeah, to, to not just surface here. Yeah, um, in fact, um, if you can put up the next slide, research, like a lot of experts on hearing have actually... Uh, def categorize levels of hearing in different ways. So we'll look at these. But first, um, research shows that normally we only remember 17 to 25 percent of what we listen to, not just the noise that's going on around us, but the stuff that we actually pay, you know, give some kind of attention to. We don't learn very much. Like I said before, listening is a gift, but it's also a skill. It's like in the, in the verses where Jesus was talking to the disciple. He said, listen and you'll understand. Then he said, you've been given a teachable heart, but you have to have a listening heart. So... I have to use my ears in combination with that teachable or listening heart if I'm really going to get the meaning out of what he says or what anybody else says. So, so there's a skill. There are skills that can be developed that can help us listen better. So let's look at these. Ignoring. Making no effort to listen. How many have experienced that? Somebody's reading the newspaper or looking at their cell phone or watching something as you're talking to them. Spouse, child, roommate, whatever. Um, pretend hearing, listening, like <laughs> nodding and saying, uh-huh, while you're actually making a shopping list or thinking about work. That happened to me this morning. Um, Kevin and Sarah and I were talking in the back room and, and Kevin said something to me and I was looking at him but at the same time, I had realized I didn't put my rings on this morning. So Kevin said something to me, and I was looking at him, but yeah. I wasn't there at all, <laughs> at all. <laughs> so we all laughed about that. Um, selective listening. Hearing only the parts of the conversation that, that interest you. Um, often, because they're about you, or because they give you a chance to start talking about yourself. I was married to a wonderful man of whom this was true. <laughs> and any of you who knew him have probably experienced that. And he had great stories to tell. He had great stories to tell. But every conversation, he was looking for an opening where he could jump in and tell a story. Um, attentive listening, paying attention and focusing on what the speaker says and comparing that to your own experiences. Now, a lot of times we do that if we need, if we know that we need to remember information, like if we're getting instructions on how to do something. We can also do it just because we want to have a conversation with somebody. And we know that in order to have an interesting conversation, we have to listen. Um, and it can make for an interesting conversation. But in your, in your mind, if you're at this stage, your focus is still on you. 
you're listening, but it's, it, it's all in light of yourself. Level five, empathic listening. Listening and responding. This is really what Craig was talking about. Listening and responding with both the heart and mind to understand the speaker's words, intent, and feelings. This is the only level where the focus really is on the other person, whether it's God or another person. And I'm not really making a distinction here between listening to God and listening to somebody else because I don't think there really is a difference. I think, um, I think real listening is when I'm totally focused on the other. And I think sometimes it can be even more of a key when we're talking about the Lord because he often talks to us without words. Sometimes he just talks to us with his presence. Sometimes we just know he's there. And to be able to be really present to that and enjoy it without having to feel like we have to fill up the space somehow. You know, people are uncomfortable with silence. Most people are uncomfortable with silence. There aren't a lot of people that you can sit with in silence. Mo for most of us, it happens with people we know really well. Um, sometimes you meet somebody and you're both able to do that. But it doesn't happen very often. Most of the time, if you leave silence long enough, somebody's going to fill it. I was actually, um, I was coaching somebody a couple of days ago, and she was like, you know, I, she's actually a minister. And she said, I get really uncomfortable in a group of people, especially when somebody gives me a compliment, because I, I say thank you, and then I feel like the conversation just stops, because I don't know what else to say. And I said, she said, what's the right response? I said, the right response is to, is to say thank you. I really appreciated that. Um, and, and, and feel it and enjoy it. But you don't have to say anything else. And I said, and you don't have to carry the conversation. Somebody, I can guarantee you, somebody will get uncomfortable and figure out something else to say if you don't. She was like, really? I'm not responsible? I said, no, you're not. But I used to do that a lot as a trainer. I'd ask a question, and then I just wouldn't say anything. I didn't care how long it took. <laughs> if we can get to the place where we're comfortable with silence, it's really a great thing in terms of being able to enjoy the, enjoy the way that God talks to us, that the Lord talks to us. Because often it will be with his presence or with uh, just a nudge, maybe a little prick, maybe a, maybe a sight, maybe something he brings into your vision, either, either physically or spiritually. But it's just that, uh, that ability to put myself down and my concerns and my problems and my needs and just be open and receptive. And that's really the same thing as listening to another person. Just putting everything else aside so that they're the focus. And you know what? God, Jesus Christ, the, the angels are always at level five. <laughs> they're always at level five. They are listening. You know, it says, it talks about Jesus making intercession for us. He always lives to make intercession for us. That word intercession, it, it really means 
to go to a person or meet a person um, for the sake of conversation, consultation, or supplication. We, te- you know, I think I used to think of intercession as please, 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 please do this. And it's not. It's, it's a conversation. It's a, con- it's a two-way thing. So when it says Jesus ever lives to make, supplica- make intercession for us, he's listening to us. He's having a conversation with us. He's going to the Father. He's having a two-way conversation with him. It's back and forth, back and forth. Maybe all at the same time. I don't pretend to understand the temporal side of things. But it is much more than this, please don't kill them, don't judge them, don't be mad at them, don't, you know, be good to them. They're really okay. It is, it's, a, it's like, what do you think? Wasn't that cool what they did? What can we do for them in return? It's... It's a beautiful thing. It's level five all the way in terms of what, what are people's hearts? What are their intentions? What are their desires? And it's going from us to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit also makes intercession for us. And he does it. What does it say in Romans 8? The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that can't be uttered. In other words, he's able to take to God things from our heart that we aren't even able to articulate. That's level five. That's level five listening. Isn't that great? And we can learn how to do that. We can practice these skills so that we get better and better at being at level five, that empathic listening, when we are with people and listening to them. Oh, yeah. Um, I got a couple of quotes. I looked for a couple of quotes on listening. So if you could put up the next slide. Here are a couple from people you may have heard of. When people talk, listen completely. Most people never listen. Isn't that a great image? Listen completely with everything. It's again that image of putting everything down, everything aside, emptying out in the best sense of the word so that, so that I don't have anything going on except focusing on you and loving you. You, uh, this one got me. You cannot truly listen to anyone and do anything else at the same time. That was kind of a ping for me. Uh, no more talking on the phone and playing solitaire at the same time. <laughs> um, because listening, I mean, this gets back to what I was saying before. Listening is, I think, one of the most powerful ways to love somebody. Because we're giving them our time. Like, time is the most valuable thing I have to give. Money comes and goes. Resources come and go. But my time, I've got a certain number of hours and days and years on this earth. Time isn't something that, that I can withdraw more of from the bank. So to give my time and my attention, that's one of the most powerful gift, gifts I can give to people. It's one of the most powerful gifts we can give to God. And it's really, you know, the, these, the, the, the things that we talked about, about how to listen, the tips we got from the Old Testament, draw near like how many, how many times have you maybe leaned forward in your chair or even drawn your chair closer or moved chairs so that you can hear somebody better? Drawing near, inclining your ear, using your whole body to listen. 
All those are tips on how to listen well. Eye contact. Um, most of us know a lot of those things if we think about them. But it's, it starts with intention. What's my intention when I'm, when I'm in conversation with somebody? Is it to give them a piece of my mind? Is it to tell them about myself? Or is it to really understand them and make them feel loved? Because if that's my intention, I'll just do the other stuff. I'll, re I'll, I'll draw near, I'll keep eye contact, I will respond, I'll ask questions. I'll make sure, like summarize them, to make sure that I get what they're saying. If, I'm, if my intention is to love them, I'll just, I don't have to think about all the techniques. I'll just be doing them. Oh, I have one more quote. Wisdom is the reward you get for a lifetime of listening when you'd have preferred to talk. <laughs> it's not exactly true, but it's kind of cute, isn't it? And I, I didn't know who Doug Larson was, so I looked him up. He was a newspaper columnist and editor who also said, life expectancy would grow by leaps and bounds if green vegetables smelled as good as bacon. <laughs> so how many of you feel like you're good listeners? How many of you feel like you'd like to get better? Well, you know, I've got good news. You can ask God. Because he wants you to listen and respond. Look at the, what we saw in the Old Testament. He is asking us to listen. That way, listen, because remember, hear or listen in Hebrew is the same as obey. Like, there, what, there is no listening. In his request, there is no listening without responding. So he'll help you. And there's a great, one of my favorite verses is in Isaiah 54, if you can put this up. The Lord has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens he awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. You can ask him to awaken your ear morning by morning to hear as those who are taught. That's what he wants to do. He wants you to be able to listen and respond that way. Not only to him, not only to the Lord Jesus Christ, but to one another. And the better I get at listening to other people, the better I get at listening to God. And I have one more image that I'd like to put up, and I'd like just to have it up when I, while I close in prayer, because I think I love this image because I feel like this is what happens when we're really listening. It's like I have my hand on your heart and you have your hand on my heart when we're really listening to each other whether that's me and God, me and the Lord Jesus Christ, me and another person. So Lord, thank you that you, you do hear us. You shamea us. You, you hear and respond. And that we can be confident that no matter where we are in our heart and mind, even if we feel very far away, you are closer than our breath, and you hear completely. You hear us completely. You hear the things we can't even say. And thank you that we can listen to you, that you've given us a teachable heart and a listening heart. And just help us to, your, to learn more, to, to learn to use that listening heart more and more of the time. Help us to be at that place of, 
of listening completely, whether it's to you or to the kingdom or to each other. Just help us. It's so rich. It's so rewarding. And really, our heart's desire is to live in relationship with you and with each other. And listening with the heart is so fundamental to that. So teach us. We're giving you permission to do whatever you need to do to make us more open, more attentive, more present to you and to each other in love, in your love, so that we can love the way you love us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. And we praise you in the wonderful, all-powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.